to stay low uh, throughout the course of a play. You can see the finish here is recovering a fumble where they bend their knees and go down with both hands and their eyes. And uh, so you get a little bit of a conditioning effect, buzzing the feet. You can see they're all attacking with the right foot. I would just tell them ball's right, and uh, they're shuffling, punch, fit, lock, and shed. You're going to see stun techniques utilized uh, in the course of a game. The first player you're looking at is 45, the left linebacker. The guard's going to combo block off the three technique and work up to 45. 45, that guard weighed 330 pounds. You can see where you're not even going to see the pad level of 45 when the guard works up to him. Um, and, and you can see that 45 uh, stuns the guard, punch, fit, lock, and shed, comes off the block, low, square, makes a good tackle. You're going to watch good football mechanics and bad mechanics here. The offensive left tackle's pulling, and he bends at the waist and not the knees, uh, causing him to overextend and lose power. The linebacker, 31, attacks the line of scrimmage. Uh, well, I'm sorry, 45, attacks the line of scrimmage. Uh, can't get underneath that low pad level, but he's low, he's square, he uses his hands well, sheds the blocker. This is a good job by 45. He can't separate quickly. He's not sure where that ball is going to enter the line of scrimmage. He's taking on the tackle. He's got to hold his ground. Uses his hands well. And, and he's able to go one side or the other, which is a reason I don't just dip and rip into a gap. That's trading one for one. I don't think you can just cancel a gap and say you've done your job. I think you've got to attack, fit, lock, shed, and, and have the ability to get off blocks and make a play um, sideline to sideline. You can see the fullback, 250-pound fullback, coming out to isolate 31. 31 does not get underneath his pad level. I'm not sure he could match him uh, with that leverage and still maneuver and put himself in position to get off a block, but he uses his hands naturally, and I think a lot of that's because of the training that we utilize uh, day after day, drill after drill, staying low, staying square, and using our hands. Here the fullback is taking on 45, 45 attacks, punch, fits, locks, holds his, uh, his three-gap which is the gap to his left, keeps his outside arm free, sheds the block or gets off the block, gets to the football. Another reason not to just dip and rip and cancel a gap. You're watching the left linebacker, number 40, take on the tight end. Punch, fit, lock, and shed, get off the block, make the tackle. this play you're going to see three good examples. The one, the guard pull um, in a pull command, sends 31 into the line of scrimmage quickly. He meets the guard before the guard can turn up into the hole, which is critical. He attacks that guard low and square, giving him a good hard joint uh, with his inside arm. And staying low and square, he's able to defeat that block tight. As 20 comes across, you're going to see 20 stun. The offensive tackle slipping off right there, and you see 40 in the backside shuffling, staying on the back, back hip of the football in position to play the cutback. You're going to see here 20 attack and hold ground versus the guard. 31 on the right linebacker spot is going to attack the one gap, and he is going to stun the offensive guard into the one gap or the A gap. And both linebackers hold their ground, stay square, and there's no place for the ball, ball carrier, to get through. Here you're going to see a good example of number 40 recovering a fumble, which is the finish of several of our drills. So when they get that opportunity in a game, they've done it a thousand times. 
and they naturally exercise good habits. Bend your knees, go down with two hands and your eyes, scoop and score. Here you're watching number 40 into the boundary. He is the contained player here. However, if he doesn't come back inside and their wide receiver is cracking our safety number 10, now we're going to be completely dependent on that corner making the tackle. And whether he did, could or couldn't remains to be unseen. But fortunately, 40 punched, fit, locked, shed, shed the blocker, got inside, and made the tackle. I think we're looking at the linebacker to the defensive left attacking number 35 and holding his ground on the stun technique, which sometimes a linebacker has to do. He's got to plug it up in there and hold ground, and that would uh, rely heavily on his inside foot. Great job punching, fitting, and locking, and shedding the fullback, staying square, getting off the block, and making the tackle. Here you're going to see 94 again, who's into the boundary. Punch, fit, lock, shed. Stay square, and then he does a wonderful job of stripping the ball. As will, uh, I think we're watching... 31 here in that perfect stance fit position. We saw this snap earlier when we were talking about how important it is to uh, shuffle our feet and to buzz our feet just prior to contact. But all of these snaps reinforce that these linebackers are in that stance position we started this presentation with when they make contact with a ball carrier, giving them a great surface to prevent post-contact yardage. This contact takes place in the passing game as well as the run game. Number 40 made straight on contact with that tight end as that tight end crossed into his area. Just turned into a straight on tackle at the end of a course. Hopefully 80 is not going to want to catch the next ball that comes across the middle after absorbing hits like that. Number 40, making a straight on hit. Low, square, knees bent, knees over the toes, shoulders over the knees, head and eyes up. Number 31, making a good square tackle. Number 40, making a tackle. This running back here was a first-round draft pick. Tackling him. Number 31, straight on tackle.
Number 40, straight on tackle. I want to decrease the angle between myself and the ball carrier, taking real estate from the ball carrier. Also, by decreasing the angle, I'm cutting down his opportunity to cut back on me. Oftentimes, I'll make my players say, cut back, cut back, cut back, as they approach that ball carrier, as they shuffle their feet, in order to remind themselves that that ball carrier at some point wants to cut back across their surface. At the last minute, I want to get my hat across the bow of the ball carrier so as to get the full force of my body into the tackle, utilizing all of the strength of my body as I get across so as to not make an arm tackle. I often tell my guys, you won't always do things all um, correct uh, perfectly, but if you do most of the things right, most of the time you're going to be successful on a particular tackle. It's human nature as I approach the ball carrier to want to speed my feet up and duck my head. One leads to the other. As I speed my feet up, often I'm going to cross over just prior to contact. If I cross over just prior to contact and that ball carrier cuts back, he's going to do so without me laying a hand on him, and I'm going to miss that tackle across my face. The key is I want to regain my shuffle. I, in, in the case of the angle drill that we just showed, I want to maintain my shuffle right up until contact. The explosion in the contact happens on, or in the tackle, excuse me, it happens on contact, not prior to. So oftentimes, uh, bending at the waist, ducking the head, consequently making a very poor tackle with a bad surface or missing the tackle altogether. Here I'm, I'm uh, using that mat again so I can finish the tackle. I'm removed from the ball carrier. I'm hustling to get to the ball carrier and when I get there I want to regain my shuffle so as to not overrunning it. It just turns into an angle tackle at the end of a pursuit course. That was well done by 56. That was a pretty good job of regaining my shuffle and fitting through it. This is a bad example. You're going to see 31 crosses over, bends at the waist, ducks his head. If that ball carrier cut back, 31 would not be able to make this tackle. This was the first day of practice down in Florida before our Orange Bowl, and we were rusty. And when my guys looked at this tape and saw some of these errors, they were anxious to get back out so that they could improve their fundamentals and techniques, which would sharpen their skills for the game. The second example, number 20, um, is too high. He doesn't get his head across. That's good body position, uh, but he's too high. He's behind the ball carrier. 40 is going to uh, do it perfectly, regain the shuffle, drive up through, and get the hat across. You're going to see when uh, the season gets on and coach shortens our individual time, we're incorporating the cut drill, we're incorporating the stun drill, and, and uh, into an angle tackle at the end of it. So I defeat the uh, cut, I accelerate. Nice job by regaining my shuffle by number 11 there and, and, um, and making a good tackle. Uh, I'm not sure 40 really did regain that shuffle. I want him to buzz the feet right before contact. Good job by 33. Buzz the feet. That was well done by 33, although his feet stopped on contact. Keep your head up, 48. Keep your head up. Defeat the block, good job. Good job buzzing the feet, good job clubbing up through the tackle. Good shock, good punch fit lock, good tight hands. Good job. Now, duck the head slightly and, and didn't really regain his shuffle. 42, uh, not bad, not bad, but you are seeing some feet stop on contact. They are making good violent uh, contact, but I want to keep those feet going. Uh, 11 was in jeopardy of getting cut there. His feet stopped on contact. Get those hands in tighter. 40, good job on the cut block. Good tight hands, good tight hands, good job playing through. Cut, regain the shuffle, good job by 33.
Good low pad level by 34. Good job playing off the cut. Good job regaining the shuffle. Drive through the tackle. It's well done by 34. I do a variation of the stun drill twice during the course of a game plan week. In fall training camp, uh, if we practice twice in a day, I'll do it once. Uh, if we practice once in a day, depending on the emphasis and whether or not we're scrimmaging, uh, I, I will or will not, but it's going to be at least every other day in, in training camp. In, uh, in 15 spring practices, we'll do some variation of the stun drill a good eight times. I believe that uh, that's what linebackers do. They take on and defeat blockers. Here we're doing a stun drill, and I just stuck this in to show that the finish is catching a ball. Uh, can't get our hands on enough balls. There might be a day when I don't want to be overly physical, or I may take one good tackle late in the season, and then I want to catch a football. So I have a finish to it. It's, it's not a fumble recovery. And, and again, as I said earlier, I don't think linebackers can catch enough balls. When we do get our hands on a ball in a game, we've got to catch it. And we've got to expect uh, to catch balls. Here's just some more illustrations of a stun drill finishing with an angle tackle. Several of the players that you're watching are currently playing in the NFL. And there's some of the younger players that uh, hopefully will be playing in the NFL upon their completion of their eligibility. That was a good job by 34. Beginning a shuffle, 44 is a long snapper. Doing a good job. 40 is a long snapper as well. Ground level shot, just a little bit of a different look for you. Good tight hands by 43, good low pad level. Your shock in the stun drill doesn't have to... Um, uh, be so physical that a player overextends. Just needs to be just that, as we saw from game footage. It's got to be low, compact. It's got to thrust that inside foot up, as you see 42 doing. Good job regaining the shuffle.